Okay, so audio check. Sounds good. And we cut and we're live. Hello. Welcome again to another, actually the final live stream in August. So we've been live every day in August so far. This is number 31. And we're glad you could join us for it. We are excited to have a final one. But it won't be the only live streams we're going to do. We are going to move to a monthly, sorry, I should say move to a weekly cadence starting in September so we're going to probably do a Thursday maybe sometimes shift it to a Friday but mostly uh, probably a Thursday night 8.30 I think is our time slot we're going to try and keep that for you and be able to bring you the latest in the Power BI world talk about some technologies do some demos and explore kind of what's in the whole arena around data technology so not just Power BI but data science, databases, you name it, we're going to have some content across those. So we look forward to doing the weekly streams. Um, we will miss this, these daily ones, but what we're trying to do is focus a little bit more on providing the video content, which is kind of why we're on YouTube in the first place, is to kind of give you that. But we had a kickstart of our channel, essentially, in August. So we've gone from, I think, just under 200 subscribers at the beginning of August, to close to 770 or maybe a little bit more than that now so a 500 plus subscriber month in our second month is is just absolutely amazing it's kind of more than probably tripled what we had in our first month and we look forward to kind of just move that forward and um thank you it's uh, great to uh, get a, a good sound check from everyone so uh, thank you joey it's um awesome to have you join us so what are we covering in today's session well you may have kind of seen some of the previous ones we did. We talked about Power Query Editor and Power Query a few times because we're doing Prepare the Data. We've been focused in on Prepare the Data for the kind of month of August. So let me kind of zone in a little bit. And a lot of that Prepare the Data means that we have to run Power Query kind of type you know, processes. So let's go and focus a little bit on what that is. So we're going to start with what is Power Query. Let's go to the top. And explain that and I've got some links here to some documentation but essentially it's our ETL for Power BI so Power Query is not just for specifically Power BI but it's kind of Power Queries across a number of technologies but essentially the, the way that we've been looking at it is is kind of having that focus in on the Power BI and potentially Excel being its kind of neighbor as well in that world getting data into these platforms into these services loading it into those data models but we can also kind of apply that against other technologies like the cds the common data service and also azure data lake store gen 2 as well we kind of have or adls as we just really refer to it these days if we go down a little bit further we can see that it helps with kind of grabbing that data and bringing that in but we can do it across many different types of technologies and the kind of data stores um, Azure Data Lake Store with its kind of vast range of different kind of file formats that we can put in there is a very good example of that. But often, you know, we want to kind of figure out why we're doing Power, we're using Power Query to kind of get data in. It usually means we have to do a transformation. We have to prepare the data in some way. And this is where we kind of help ourselves with that technology. Of course, we're not going to get to a lot of detail here, but, you know, essentially when we bring that data in, it's usually a kind of one-time effect and then we're going to come behind the scenes later on and refresh that data either on a schedule or with that manual kind of f5 you know keep going until it can refreshes 
but essentially we have also options around kind of doing volume of changes in the back end data set how often does that change is it kind of changing rapidly so maybe a direct query would be a better option for us to kind of leverage or is an import with a kind of frequency of change and update better for us and some data doesn't change very often at all let's say I'm going to load a data table um, and it's got just dates in it well dates don't really change that often if I load it with say five years worth of data those dates aren't going to change you now say 19 uh, 20 2017 through to 2021 and 22 we basically have some dates tomorrow they're not going to be any different so we may want to load it once and then turn off the repeated load and that's going to help us with the performance of those but essentially we go down we have two different types of power query experiences or kind of uh, interfaces one is the one we know in desktop power bi desktop and kind of yeah and also the similar kind of experience we get in power bi um, and power query inside of excel but then we also have one which is going to be the power query we find online which is a slightly different one and maybe even something like Azure ADF, Azure Data Factory is another example of that. Tons and tons of transformations are there. I'm going to give you an example of kind of what I mean by tons and tons of transformations. This is what I mean. There's a lot, you know, there's text transformations, number, structures uh, for the values, running scripts, doing things around date and time. So doing time dimensional changes. We want to transform the table to data to a different data type. We want to manage which rows and other statistical information. So the list goes on and on and on. And then we also bring in additional kind of AI capabilities at the end of that maybe as well to you know, add some text analytics or machine learning algorithm capabilities to the mix. Tons of different options available for the Power Query Editor. So we want to be able to leverage as much kind of as built-in technology as we can and the power query formula language which is known as m for mashup is kind of where we want to spend some time we want to understand what's all this doing you know what's this let and in what are these different kind of entries in here each row is doing something different and it's actually in a sequential order so it's doing it in the sequential order it's kind of been added to. Now it's basically referring back to a previous step name. So you kind of see examples of that where we kind of scroll, go on, grab one here, expander, sender. So when I look at that, I can see that we actually have referenced the previous step name. There we go. And then look at the one below it, filtered rows and filtered rows, filtered rows one, filtered rows. So we can kind of specifically reference a state essentially as it's being processed. And what we can do is, you know, sanitize this a little bit and kind of make sure we're doing it effectively and doing it in the right order to make things kind of, so basically one of the things you don't want to do is maybe like do a whole bunch of processing and then go and remove all those rows at the very last step. If I don't want those columns rather, all those rows, let me go and remove those at the top let me go and filter my rows filter my columns early on and then perform the transformations don't get the engine to do a bunch of work it doesn't really need to do so that's going to be an example of trying to keep it efficient there what kind of technologies where's power query found well it's found both in the m query engine uh in power query desktop so we've got kind of different um technologies like ADF, Power Apps, Power Automate, SQL Server, Analysis Services. Some of those work with different kind of power, kind of query, kind of capabilities. So you can see Power BI runs across the board and it's the only one that has functionality every product. It can use data flows, Power Query Online, the desktop and obviously the mQuery language. So depending on what we're trying to do, depends on where we need to spend our time. Coming down, we can see more resources about how to shape and kind of move that data around and make it more efficient. So these are the things we're trying to do inside of the Power Query Editor. I'm just going to go and actually open up the transform data and just pick a, a kind of example one here. We can see that we have a number of applied steps and they're done in this sequence. And if I want to see the details, I can go into maybe my advanced editor and 
explore what actually each of those steps are doing. One of the things I do find I do when I'm working with my kind of consulting clients is I want to maybe source control this a little bit and Power BI, the PBIX files doesn't really kind of work that well with source control right now. But I know that my queries, in this case, the code here, copy. I'm just going to go done on this. I'm just, I've just done a control C copy. I'm going to go to a new blank file. So what we want to do here is we want to do new source want to go blank query I've got a blank query here now if I go to advanced editor you notice it's still got like the let and the in I'm just going to replace both of those with this same code that I just copied it's called query one at the moment I've done that and now I basically have exactly the same output as I had for the international one I just copied it from let me just rename that um, so let me just go in and go um, Intel, uh, kind of a, a copy, maybe something like that. So I've got now exactly the same copy. Now, what I can do is obviously maybe play with using this in a different way, trying things out, changing maybe the data types. I can leave the existing table alone and work with this one and get kind of my, you know, my modifications, my changes that I want to do right. And let's say I'm going to remove this uh let's kind of just change this to um zip code i don't we're going to change it back again it's, it's really kind of i'm only going to change that to text so from text to home number now what i've done is i've lost the preceding zero when it was text it had some zeros in there and the reason be i can tell that is if i just go back that step i can see the zeros um like here that precede the 7649 when i convert it over I lose that and it's now 7649. I'm going to try out see if that is actually going to break stuff and we, I know it kind of will do but I kind of maybe trying out some different data types or seeing what the change impact might be. I can make a copy of that and when I'm happy what I could do is actually kind of say well look, this is actually the new version let me go and grab that data come back in here go to the international table which is the one I want to keep and I'm going to just switch that out with the new code. And now it's going to see that there's an issue here because essentially we're referring to there's, there's some problems there. So I'm going, okay, that didn't that was a problem. I knew this was going to happen, but I wanted to showcase. There's a problem. I can just revert and take that back. And I realize that, that things are kind of broken right now, so that's fine. What we can do is we can just undo and we just close out. The change and we can say discard the changes and we're going to discard all those changes we made and we're back to where we were so we have the ability to go and make changes to the code try them out and use things like blank queries and use the mquery language and you know move it around the way we want to but I can then go and say well I'm going to put that into say you know, a document I won't be notepad but I'll just go and use notepad as an example so notepad, oh, need to click the right button first, there we go. Why is that not typing? Okay, note, there we go. Need to put the cursor in the right place. So I'm going to put that into, we're going to change the format a little bit to be slightly smaller than 2000 foot view. There we go, let's change that to that size. Now I've got all my text that I want to keep. What I can do is I can put that in source control. So I know that this is the international table in this report and here's the syntax for building that. Over time, as I change that, I can version this. So I can do it in source control. I can version my code query changes essentially by just taking the syntax from the advanced editor and moving it into a file system and, and versioning that. In terms of kind of the visuals that's a little bit more complicated so we probably would then have a way of kind of trying to track those visuals and there's, there's different ways of doing it but essentially in terms of the prepare the data this is the things that I'm trying to track here so I get rid of that okay do a time check good okay I'm gonna minimize that for a second go back to my query there so 
just wanted to make you know that we have a new episode that I loaded uh, earlier today. Um, I did load it once and I realized I'd loaded the wrong version. So, uh, so yeah, shoot me in the head. Um, I'd uploaded the right version that had been processed and had the right um, kind of a, uh, you know, text additions that added to the to the video, etc. And that's now up there and loaded. So that's fully uh, processed. The HD version's there for you. The closed captions are currently being processed, and I will have those added later, probably tomorrow. And all the episodes, free to however many we should be up to by now. I'm going to focus on in the next week or two to bring us up to date kind of in where we need to be so we have those uh and then you know every monday wednesday friday we will have once we call up we'll have uh, the cadence of those being delivered out but we do have some other training in the works for you the first one is a dashboard in a day event and at the moment we've got a date highlighted of let me go so aka.msdiad for dashboard in a day links are in the description below by the way and if you are fairly new to us uh you also would say uh do come on and uh where's that not coming up um let me go and see if i can get this to turn on there we go and subscribe to the channel and get that notification bell rung and give us a thumbs up if you like the content but when we kind of put out the video and the information about how to sign up for this going to get notified the first 50 people that kind of sign up will be the ones that will be able to be lucky enough to attend the date we are currently looking for is get the cursor to jump over my screens into September the 21st of September in addition to the dashboard of the day which will be a free course no charge 50 students uh, max for it we will be doing a DP 900 one day course in October the date is to be confirmed I need to go and check on a couple of existing engagements uh, for training and just make sure that I have the day in mind fully available if it is uh, I'll let you know this coming probably Thursday um, and also you know I'll put it some tweets out and, and, and that kind of stuff as well but that's going to be in October and it's going to be the DP 900 which is the new Azure data fundamentals one so I mean, I've got a bit of buzzing going on my headset there we go okay so let me just go to DP 900 Azure fundamentals so I took this exam a couple of weeks back a week or two ago and it's one of those kind of one day shorter courses um, and what we're measuring is the content of how Azure stores data etc so there'll be a one day instructor led course which is this one here and you'll be able to sign up for that again free of charge one day sometime in October and following on from the DP 900 we also will have the AI 900 which is the Azure data fundamentals so I don't know well there we go I hate these dump sites they keep plugging up all the time um, never use a dump for whatever you do you don't know the technology don't take the exam um, but they are just proliferate on this website at the moment um, websites out there so as you start typing in something it jumps up people pay to have their content thrown in front of everything else AI fundamentals gonna be a great kind of uh, foundation course if you want to take the AI 100 so I teach the AI 100 I've got some uh, Azure data science and AI courses I'm actually doing a um, let me see the uh, past summit there we go so I've got a session coming up later in the year in November I think the, is it the 12th of September uh, 12th of November no yeah so I can't remember exactly which day I've actually been allocated I don't think um, I've got it kind of fully locked down yet but between the 10th and the 13th of November I will be doing a half day Azure Data Science and AI project session so it's a two and a half hour it's kind of two 75 minute sessions essentially locked together roughly and we have a little bit of gap between them come along um, sign up for this virtual past summit there is a cost so kind of look out for those uh, those codes available out there right now for discounts but it's one of the best kind of conferences you're able to attend in terms of content and the people presenting there's a good number of people on there so go and actually kind of learn about more about that 
here's all the different um, speakers and sessions that are on there but I will be doing a session this year on a half day workshop style git repository follow along um, recorded from the studio so we'll be able to kind of uh, do it from the studio here and have this available for you so but that's kind of the kind of things we're doing and the AI 900 will be in November as a free one day course so recap just um, the dashboard of the day is in September 21st October will be DP 900 date to be confirmed as well as the AI 900 date to be confirmed just going to check in why I have a customers that I'm doing training with that um, the two dates in mind are free and clear of any other requirements okay let's have a quick time check good check the uh, good we're we'll seeing everything there I'm just gonna just check those volume as well so I was, I was getting some sound issues on previous ones we're good uh, we're, one of the recordings didn't go out at all with any sound so uh, just checking on that being a bit paranoid okay I've done a ton of notes for this mind map that I'm going to be describing transcribing into this mind map over the next one to two weeks along with the videos so as the videos get finished and uh, posted and the new content and once I have this so once a week I will probably be releasing a version of this up with the new content so look look forward to seeing that kind of every week there'll be a new version an updated version with new content um, and I'm really looking forward to putting a lot of healthy information in here about the DA100 and uh, all the related other information I've found along that journey for you what else do we have well that's pretty much coming towards the end of this specific um, kind of live stream let's go back to our power query documentation and there's a lot of information in here that will help you kind of understand the best way of getting data into Power BI, into Excel and other technologies like Azure Data Factory, etc. My recommendation is you go and look at what Microsoft Learn has available. And if you want to do that, you go in pretty much uh, to any of these locations, go to Learn. It's going to go down to, uh, let's go browse go into the browse function and just going to type power query in here so power query and if I type power query you'll see there's a few different um, modules mostly around the power bi that we've already been looking for but there's a couple of them that will be like calculation tables querying data in synapse analytics the previous known as azure daily warehouse so it's used across a number of different technologies so spend some time have a look at what's available in there I will be talking to a number of my partners in the next couple of weeks um, around the training offers offers that we have in the pragmatic works and also for the skill me up so the opportunity folks so keep uh, ears and eyes out for information from us going in uh, about what we can help you with in terms of your training resources there but we will have something we can definitely share I'm sure um, I know we already have some capabilities in that space for Paramatic Works so with that said I'm going to uh, leave you I'm going to go on and have a drink with a friend of mine I haven't seen him for a few weeks uh, and uh, we missed it, each other on my birthday so we're going to have a couple of whiskeys maybe a couple of jars um, to kind of chew the fat uh, across stuff so I will see you very very soon in a video or in our live streams every week on from September onwards and I'll let you know but generally probably Thursday next one will be this coming Thursday but I don't know if it's gonna be Thursday every other week I'm gonna just gonna kind of play it by ear a little bit and see if we need to adjust the date and time but I'm hopefully uh, that will be a good time frame for us so we will see you um, and we're gonna put those dates in the comments so uh, let me just kind of put that over one sec um, so I will put those dates into uh, the description below about how you can so as soon as I've got the sign up sheet ready ready and available I'll put that into the comments etc um, and I'll put a video out as well specifically about how to sign up for those dashboards of the day so keep posted do that um, 
subscribe and that helps you get notified when we have new stuff thank you for joining us it's been awesome to have you and we look forward to seeing you very very soon and if you have any comments or any questions put those in the comments and i will happily uh, respond as well so i will see you soon ta-ta for now